Maybe. Maybe a little bit of cheese here. I'm not sure. Oh, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way. Wow. What is up, gamers? It's Jerky here, and today we're going to be pushing top ladder with one of the craziest decks of all time. And if you've been following the page for a while, you know this is one of my recent favorites. First things first, gotta shout out HypnoCR for coining this deck and putting it on the map. Second things second, holy moly, 2.6 elixir cycle spam deck? Yes, please. But actually, I know at first glance, there are a lot of reasons to doubt this deck. There's no spell, there's no building. Surely it doesn't work, but I promise you, it works. And while it is absolutely not the best deck in the meta, decks like this teach you to become a better player. And the reason for that is because it's simply a hard deck to use and you can't rely on the crutch of a spell or a building to defend and, and or close out the match. Which is one of the reasons why the skill floor for this deck is really high, but also the skill ceiling for it is even higher. And right now I'm sitting at top 500 in the entire world and I'm going to show you just how powerful this deck can be. So win or lose, I'm gonna be showing you high level gameplay with this deck right here. So come along for the ride and let's have some fun. All right, in our first match of the video against this person, I'm so excited to play this deck for you. Um, I love it, it's one of my personal favorites and I don't always get to make videos on um, Path of Legends. A lot of my cards are under leveled, so it doesn't really work for me on Path of Legends, but this deck absolutely does. Inside the top 500, like I showed, but um, early season ranks are kind of like inflated, so it doesn't quite mean anything. Okay, he just used his log. I'm definitely going to go in with a barrel. Um, he'll have some counter in hand. I mean, no one just cycles their log without being ready for the threat of a barrel. Okay, he goes for a hunter there. I'm going to cycle goblins again. I know he doesn't have log, but I know he is running log hunter. So I, I knew he didn't have log in hand is what I meant to say. I'm going to go like this here. Again, no log. He's going to get a good amount of damage. Probably like one RG shot, maybe two. And that's okay. That's kind of like... When you don't run a building, that's kind of what you expect. Let's go like this just to make this more menacing. Again, I would love if he used his log here. He just goes for guards. That's a really, really good play. Alright. So RG... This deck, you know, I've seen a lot of people that are like, how do you defend RG without a building? It actually does fairly well. Um, you'd be surprised at things that you can do. As long as we're spreading all of his troops out and not giving him too much spell damage, like, this deck is actually really strong. We're gonna go like this. I think I'm just gonna let that Fisherman go. I don't believe that it gets damage on my tower. Okay, I'm gonna barrel in the back here. I don't want him to be able to log my Princess and my barrel. That's something that a lot of people will try to do. And you can see there, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a, that's literally the exact situation we were trying to avoid. So really good call out there. And now he, he had to spend a Hunter now. And because of that, he can't really probably do the push that he wanted to. So that log, that like micro interaction, ended up being like super important for us. I'm curious to see how he defends this. I feel like this is gonna be really awkward. Now he overspent there. Let's go like this. And if he goes for a log here, I think we just win. Okay, so here. So he has no log in hand. Let's go like this. Real barrel on one side, fake barrel on the other, and like, look at, look at this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I should have played the real barrel on that side, but either way, that's an incredible amount of damage. Okay, he might, get, he might go in for an RG here. He might not. Okay, we're just gonna go for our goblins. He decides to just chill and set up a defense. That's fair. Let's go. I'm gonna cycle my dark goblin. I think it's a good idea to try and get back to another one shortly. Once again, I'm going to go barrel and back. And I'm going to Valkyrie to pull away this monster. I don't want the monster getting, like, high up. Where Yeah, so CCC, exactly. Keeping that monster out of range there is so important. Okay, he goes log. I'm actually going to do this and then go goblins here. And while he doesn't have log in hand, I'm going to go like this. He's going to play hunter in the back. Yeah, that's why you play barrel right there. Because um, it's a really good position against the hunter. Okay, he didn't quite play it in the back, but... Okay, let's go like this, and then goblins here. If he goes log, we'll go dark goblin. Nice, and you can see how fast that hunter just gets, like, eviscerated. That's why I think this matchup's really not that bad for us. Okay, nice. He's gonna log there. I'm gonna pressure with wall breakers. And, dude, it's just so hard for him to defend a lot of this pressure. And like I said, you think we would struggle against Royal Giant, but here we are, just doing just fine. Okay, let's see if he goes in here. Indeed he does. We have to go like this. Okay, Fisherman, instead of logging our Dark Goblin, and you can see it just gets eviscerated. It's not really a big problem for us. We just want to make sure we don't get greedy here um, and sell the match. We have great damage onto both lanes, which is nice for us. Okay. So I'm going to go like this. Okay. Like I said, not getting greedy here. Dark Goblin's going to get a shot, I think. Beautiful. Fisherman comes down. I know he's going to go for a Royal Giant here soon. At least he probably should. 
That's the thing is like, you don't have a big spell, so you don't want to get antsy here. Antsy is the enemy. If you just commit and you start spamming and they get a really big positive elixir trade, it's like, you very well could lose. Spreading everything out, knowing that he only has a log. Let's go wall breakers here, just to mitigate the damage that the doctor causes. And now, we've gotten, we've done so much damage onto both lanes, I'd be surprised if he could defend this for no damage, and indeed he can't. Okay. Okay, let's do this right away here. Okay, he goes like that. No berry on our tower here. One shot, doesn't have login cycle. We have a great counter push here, and we have a princess. I'd be surprised if he could stop this for no damage. So this is most likely where the game ends. So GG uh, to that player right there. Didn't panic. We're in control most of the time. I'm going to hold that W. We'll see you in the next game. All right. Next match here against AZ. He's rocking the Grandmaster banner. That's definitely one of my favorite banners. I always like... Um, draw comparisons between chess and Clash Royale. I feel like there's so much overlap. All right. Goblin Gang comes down. We're going to get a good amount of damage. He's definitely going to try and capitalize off of this elixir advantage that he has. And it's definitely the right play. Fortunately, we have a Valkyrie. But even so, we're still going to we're still gonna take damage here. All right. Mm, oh, no. All I have is this. <laughs> it's not going to work that well. Oh, that was a bad play. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Dude, that's so unfortunate. All I did was go Goblin Barrel, and I was down so much Elixir right off the start. All right. Probably going to end up losing him. Mm. He calls early GGs. I mean, like, high key, I agree. I don't think the BM is necessary, but that's okay. All right. We're going to try and lock in here and see what we can do. But, you know, at this level, at this level of, of the game, like, you can't really do that much in these types of situations. All right, I'm gonna let this go. I'm assuming he has arrows. I don't know for sure. Oh, actually, he does have arrows. We know for a fact he has arrows. Basically, we just can't give him arrows value on the right side of our screen. Like, we just can't. Otherwise, we, we instantly lose, essentially. On this side of the screen, it's okay. Or not okay, but it's a little better, I guess you could say. All right. He used his arrows, so I'm gonna go in on this lane. He's gonna eat these wall breakers, which is nice, and he's probably gonna eat a little bit of barrel damage, so... We ate so much damage there, but we kind of get a little bit back. I don't think so. My man is calling early GGs. He's spamming it. There's nothing I want more than to bring this back, but just not looking good. We'll see if he decides to arrows on any of this. We have our E-Spirit ready just in case. Okay. Decent interaction for us. I mean, I feel like he's playing a little cocky. He's playing a lot of Elixir right now and it's working out for us. Okay. Okay. Like I said, no arrows value on that side. Okay, nice. Again, on the other lane, that's fine with me. Let's go like this. I'm going to play the barrel in the front because um, I think he's going to go gang. Nice. Look at the right side. Mm, not as much damage as we needed to be 100% honest. I'm going to try and get King Terra activated here with the E-Spirit. No, it didn't work. Oh, no. So much damage that we just took right there. Okay, if he arrows this, we're in trouble. Oh. He actually arrows over there. Okay, let's go like this. Nice. Good lane block by him. That was actually so smart. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, can't defend that other lane, I don't think. Ah, uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. We're going to have to sack that lane and then hope that we can take this tower, but more than likely we can. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe a little bit of cheese here. I'm not sure. Oh, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. Wow, that's crazy. That's why you never give up because you might be, be playing someone who's an absolute bot. Wow, that's actually crazy. BMing from the start just to choke. We're going to hold that W. We'll see you in the next game. All right. Up here against Last World. Um, that last match was pretty close. Um, I feel like at this level, like, so many of the games are, like, they go to five minutes. So, you know, this video might have less games, but it'll be a little bit longer. Just because that's the way that the news goes. Okay, he goes for the March there. He probably has Tornado. I'm going to try and get King Tower activated here with the Valkyrie. Ah, I failed. That's okay, though. He failed the Tornado, which is nice. Okay, they usually run a building. So I'm going to kind of wait, right? Because I want him to think he can get away with not playing the building. Oh, nice. That's actually not going to pull those wall breakers. So we're going to get one little shot on the tower. So he's probably playing the Remy Ellie deck, which is Magic Archer Tornado with Miner. Um, so neither of us have a big spell. So again, we might be in for like one of those five minute matches. 
Um, this match is so contingent on the Magic Archer. Like, you need to play around the Magic Archer. You need to predict the Magic Archer. You just need to be so, so careful. I'm going to go like this here. Okay, yeah, he's playing the Goblin Drill variant, so that's good to know. Okay, let's go like this. And again, just trying to predict the Magic Archer as best as we can. We'll see if he goes for a Tornado here. I don't think he will. Yeah, so I'm just going to let this go. Cool. So he does get a little bit of chip there. Not great for me. Let's see what he does here. Okay, he goes for the Knight. Fair enough. I'm going to go like this. Uh, I should have gone E-Spirit behind it because he's just going to go, yeah, Skeletons. Okay. My mistake there, but it's not that big of a deal. It would, that was more like a nice to have versus like you needed to do that. You know what I mean? We're going to go Gang here. And then we're going to go Double Barrel in the safe spot here. He has Log and Tornado. Ooh, he just used his Tornado. Nice, nice. Look at the damage on that side and the other side. So that's great for us. Beautiful. These wall breakers still threaten damage on the tower. At least I think they do. Well, yeah, one of them. Nope. Nope. That's okay. We find ourselves in a lead, but one good magic archer lineup and the tables can absolutely turn. Either way, I think we're in for a really, really fun matchup. Okay. I'm going to cycle my E spirit here. And I'm going to go for my dark goblin and then try and predict the magic archer with my Valkyrie. Indeed we do. So really good prediction there. Nice. He does go for a lineup. He's going to get some damage onto the tower. That's okay with me for now. Okay. Okay, no, no tower and cycle. That's going to be nice for us now that we have our uh, wall breakers coming up. Let's go like this. He's going to be back to another building soon here. So I'm going to do this. It'll also help out with the magic archer. In case he were to go for a prediction. I can't risk him getting a Magic Archer lineup, so I have to, like, spam this lame. I know that looks really, really bad, but, like, if he gets a Magic Archer lineup, like, we effectively lose the game. So, you kind of have to take that risk there. Nice. That's going to get damage. That's good damage. That's great damage for us. And he still has to respond to the Princess. Let's go like this. So far, so good, but I told you one connection is all it takes. But he just used his Marcher, so, like, our defense should be pretty sweat-free here, which is nice. Relatively, because he doesn't have a big spell. Let's go Princess like this. Going to let those go, actually. Okay, and we're looking good. We're looking good. Not great, but we're looking good. I think he's going to log on that side, so I'm actually going to pressure really, really hard with wall breakers here. Okay. Dark Goblin is a menace on this lane right here. Okay, we're going to go with wall breakers. Ooh, Dark Goblin, Dark Goblin, and Princess. I don't think he's going to be ready for it, and that's most likely going to be good game. So good game to this guy. That matchup could go either way. It's always on a tight, tight rope, but we edged him out this time. We're going to hold that W and see you in the next game. All right, enter our next, next match of the video against Pekka. Do we think they're running Pekka? Not sure. All right, I'm just going to chill here. I will go uh, E-Spirit here. I was going to chill, but he used his skeletons. Nice, nice timing. Skeletons, Log, and Hunter might be, might be a deja vu of Royal Giant. That'd be crazy getting that matchup again. I feel like there are a lot of diverse decks um, at this point in ladder, so... That would just be kind of surprising. Wow, it looks like it is going to be Royal Giant again. Just my luck. Two Royal Giant matchups. Lucky me, huh? Yeah? Okay, we're going to go like this. Um, but like I said, I actually don't think that matchup is that bad. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay. All right, I want to save my um, Dark Goblin for the Royal Giant. Because it's kind of like my best source of DPS. I'm going to go like this. Mm, I was going to play my Dark Goblin behind it. But I think I would have regretted it. Nice, Fishboy comes down. Let's get ready for him to go RG. Or he might just let the Fisherman go, but we, we would have been ready. Okay, he is going to let it go here. E-Spirit ready if he tries to cheap out with Skeletons. Okay, he does not. He does not. Okay, let's go E-Spirit here just to kind of like simmer this down. And I'm going to go Valkyrie. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. He could pop the ability. He could not. We'll see. Yeah, he opts too. That's fine. He is going to get damage, but not an overwhelming amount of damage. And okay, get ready for this push here, right? He only has Log and Hunter, and Log and Hunter are, are not going to stop all of this. We're going to go like this to catch Skeletons, maybe? No, we don't quite catch Skeletons. Wow, really good defense, actually. I cannot believe he defended all of that. Like, I thought for sure we would get damage on the tower. He actually, he absolutely played that perfectly. That's mildly intimidating. That push usually works. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, well, well played. All right, well, we're going to see if we can continue. Look at those pits right there. Your man is grinding. We're going to, you know, I'm going to go like this. Beautiful. Okay, that's still fine with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before he gets logged back in cycle, let's do this. 
Okay, he's definitely going to clog this lane. Okay, log comes down. I'm going to Dark Goblin early. And then I'm going to try and block the Fisherman here. Nice, and indeed we do. That's huge. Valkyrie to pull everything back. So this guy is running a Lightning variant. So a little different than the guy that we played earlier. But that's A-OK. -okay. Minus the, the fact that he gets Lightning Chip on our tower. Oh, he did not use Log. I thought for sure he was going to use Log there. That's okay. This still threatens a Wall Breaker connection. And we get it. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Just keep cycling. Just keep cycling. Just keep cycling. 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 Okay, beautiful. Now we have our double barrel push again, which is awesome. And remember, he doesn't have log. He doesn't have log. Let's wait and reactively play our wall breakers on the side that he doesn't play his log. Mm, okay, nope. We're going to let that go, actually. Princess is going to come down. And I want to DPS this down early. Oh, great block by him, actually, if that was intentional. Okay. Lightning doesn't do well against the swarms for the most part. Okay, let's go like this. He has to defend the counter push. That is the one thing that this deck does so well is like... Your troops always get a really nice counter push. Nice Dark Goblin's going to go crazy there. He's going to eat that whole Dark Goblin. We're going to barrel on the back so we can't log the front and the back. Super close match here. Mm, okay, I'm going to drop a Princess here. Mm. And then E-Spirit just to kind of distract it. Okay, let's go like this. He has such a quick cycle when he has um, the, the Goblin Steam down, which is really, really frustrating. Okay, let's do this. And then we're going to block... The Fisherman. Shouldn't really have to worry about the Hunter too much. Okay, pressuring wall defending. Super, super important. And we have the Valkyrie here. He can't log on the Dark Goblin. He needs it over there. Let's go like this. E-Spirit for the Skeletons. E-Spirit for the Skeletons. Nice. Great prediction there. <laughs> Evil Skeletons are so good. We still don't get a connection. How crazy is that? In my opinion, it's crazy. Nice. Valkyrie's going to do so much damage. Valkyrie's going to do so much damage. He can't just ignore that Valkyrie. And indeed, he doesn't. Let's go like this. And then Wall Breakers as well. I right, gotta keep this pressure up. Come on. No, 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 no. Don't tell me that destroys my entire push. Are you kidding me? Wow, 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 wow. No way, dude. No way. Good game. I mean, we sold at the end, but I think we played it okay. I guess I got a little antsy. So GG to that guy minus the BM. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Up here against Mr. Adnan. I've definitely played against this guy before. Only I'm only saying that because I recognize the name. But um, we'll see. We're going to give him the good luck. I like to give the G the good luck at the start of the game. I feel like if you issue the good luck at the start, they're less likely to BM. Okay, that last game was absolutely crazy. I mean, I'm still like, not shaking. But you know when you have a close game and your heart starts racing? Like, my heart was absolutely racing Like by the end of that last game. Okay, looks like he's either running like... I think there's a really popular electro giant deck that's out right now i feel as though he might be running electro giant or graveyard or balloon freeze i know i just named like three options for you guys but like that's like the only thing that makes sense with these cards i swear okay archers don't tell me a ton of okay graveyard never mind okay, let's go like this and then we're gonna go goblins here he might have like a freeze i mean that graveyard is actually pretty inconsequential for him because um I have Cannoneer, so like I can't really defend super easily and get a counter push. So I'm not gonna open up and be like, oh, that was a bad graveyard. Like that graveyard was actually pretty fine. I don't think that was a bad play by any means. Okay, we're gonna go Valkyrie here just to pull this in. And at least if he pops the ability, it's not really a threat. So here's the thing. He's gonna be ready with a bowler. Okay, there we go. So, okay, actually, he want, yeah. Okay, there's the bowler. I was waiting. I was like, maybe he'll play the bowler in the back. Like if he expects me to play a barrel and, or something, but. He does not. Okay, Dark Goblin finished that off. I actually didn't think that was going to happen. I think he has Nato, so I'm going to go Princess here as well. Nah, just arrows. Okay, fair enough. Kanadir actually does pretty well against the archers. We're going to go like this. And it still threatens a connection on the tower, so he should have to spend on it. And indeed, he does. Oh no, and it's still got a connection. I'm going to go Dark Goblin high. I'm actually going to save my Valkyrie. Um... If possible. And man, oh man, we're playing this game awesome right now. Like, no self-glaze, but I really, really like the way we're playing this. We're going to get good damage on both lanes. I should have gone real barrel on the other side in hindsight. We would have gotten way more damage. It's just hard because we already got so much damage in the opposite lane. Okay. I'm going to go Dark Goblin high. And then I think he's going to go for, like, archers or something. So I'm going to go Valkyrie to try and, like, block the archers. And again, I think he has, like, a freeze. So I'm not, like, I'm not comfortable right now. 
spreading everything out. Actually, he probably just has arrows, the more that I'm looking at his deck. So from a matchup perspective, I think we actually fare, like, pretty decently. He's just gonna eat those wall breakers, yep. But now we're at the point where we can switch lanes, and when you're playing against Graveyard, you actually you really, really want to switch lanes. Or you want to go opposite lane. Excuse me, that's what I meant to say. Okay, that was kind of a weird Graveyard. Yeah, he said GG's. Um, I don't know if he's going to give up, but he said good game. Okay, no. Sometimes people see good say good game, and then they, like, throw in the towel. Not always, like, top players aren't necessarily wants to do that but sometimes you can interpret it that way okay let's go in here i want him to have to spend nice he actually blocks the lane what is he gonna spend on the nate the barrel okay great damage over there let's go early dark Alvin here he's definitely gonna go for arrows i would think so we're gonna have the e-spirit ready e-spirit gonna save the day on defense we actually have really good graveyard damage i'm not even gonna cap he used his arrows i think he's gonna give up so good game there i actually think we have matchup to be honest, even though he's running Graveyard against Cannoneer. So GG's, he was a good sport. We'll hold that dub, and I'll see you in the next game. All right, up here against Wolf. Uh, likely our last match of the video. We're going to see, though. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck, but I feel like we've had some really, really quality matches to start off the game. I'm going to say good luck to this person. P.E.K.K.A. first play, man. Clash Royale in 2020. People really just be dropping P.E.K.K.A. first play. Maybe P.E.K.K.A. Ram Rider. All righty. Pekka first play. What a world that we live in, huh? That's crazy. That, I don't know why. Anytime someone drops over six elixir to start the game, just rubs me the wrong way. Maybe I'm just too sensitive. I don't want him to uh, be able to go Ram Rider, so I'm going to go, like, save my E-Spirit. And indeed we do. Okay. I'm going to go Wall Breakers here. He does get King Tower activation, but we get a lot of damage in exchange, so, like, I think that's worth it. But we'll see. That's tough to say. I mean, King Tower Activation doesn't do as much when we have, like, Rocket and we have a Spell Cycle. But since we don't have a Spell Cycle, King Tower, like, hurts a little more against our deck. But it's still, like, not that big of a deal in the in the grand scheme of the matchup. We're going to go like this just to, like, soak a little damage from the Electro Giant. And we're also already back to a barrel. So we're going to go ahead and drop the barrel. This Goblin's going to help tank for it, which is awesome. He just goes for the Zap there. I don't disagree. I'm going to go gang in the middle here. Some of it will counter push into the opposite lane, which is nice. Yeah, I need to drop to the bandit. I'm going to go wall breakers over here away from the bandit. You can see how the threat of a dual, of dual lane in this matchup is like so menacing. Okay, we're going to go like this here. If he goes um, P.E.K.K.A., I'm actually okay with that. Um, I still think we can defend. I don't want to spam anymore though because like, yeah, exactly. That is why we did not spam was because he was probably going to go P.E.K.K.A. and like maybe Ram Rider or something. So... We're going to spread everything out, Dark Goblin right away, and the main thing here is not to panic. Do not panic. Panic is the enemy in this type of situation. So we're going to set up for a really nice Wall Breaker kite. At least we're going to try to. Let's go like this. Beautiful. Like I said, panic is the enemy. We're back to another Dark Goblin. Goblin's here. As long as he doesn't have like a freeze or something like miraculous that he can pull out of his pocket, we're going to be okay. And indeed we are. Nice, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Dark Goblin is actually going to tank here. We're going to go like this. And he does not have Evil Pekka and Cycle anymore, which is awesome. You can see every time we play a card, it forces out so much Elixir. Oh, oh. Oh, I was not ready for this. He, all he can do is NATO. That's why I kind of tried to play the Valkyrie high. Um, to kind of prevent the NATO. That's why I played Valkyrie and then Dark Goblin, because NATO was really his only option in that situation. So, don't know if you could tell that that was intentional, but it definitely was. Let's go Valkyrie here. The reason for that is because then if he goes P.E.K.K.A., like, this is still a, a menacing push. Okay, never mind. It's not. Oh, well, now we're in trouble because that's not enough damage to take the tower. But now we're in jeopardy of losing the game. So, let's go like this. Let's go gang. And then I need this to lock onto the balloon. Oh, no, 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 no. Oops. Well, good game. Yeah, we messed up that defense a little bit at the end. I think that barrel was a little bit of a reach. So I'm going to keep that L in there for you. Learn from my mistake, and we'll play one more. All right, into our last match of the video against this player right here. And um, we're going to give him the good luck. I hope you've been enjoying the video so far. I've been trying to, you know, listen to the feedback. There are great comments that are left on the YouTube video about the editing styles, about leaving losses, and all of those types of things. And so I'm really trying to listen to that feedback. And, um, yeah, like, just like listen to you guys and listen to all of the awesome feedback that you give me all the time i'm gonna actually do this yeah i guess he's gonna zap okay we're gonna get a lot of damage here it is what it is 
Okay. That push is always difficult for us to stop. Okay, he does need to spend there. I'm going to go wall breakers. You want to push opposite lane anyway, so... Wow, he might actually just eat that. Nope. Okay, beautiful. Double wall breaker connection there. Beautiful. Yeah, this deck... This matchup's really tough because they have, like, usually three small spells. And you just don't really have answers. Because <laughs> you don't have a building, right? Like, how are you supposed to pull it in and defend the Goblin Giant? So it ends up being just kind of like... I call it a schlobber knocker where both of you guys are just like exchanging blows. Yeah, let's go like this. It threatens so much damage onto the tower. Ooh, beautiful, and we are going to get it. And he had to spend a lot there, which is good. I don't think he can afford a goblin giant, um, which is nice. So Valkyrie high. Nice. And you can see here, we can defend this easily. And on top of that, we're going to have a reasonable counter push. I want to go opposite lane in this matchup, so I'm going to kind of let him get damage on the right side, so that way we can continue to force out Elixir um, and counter push. Oh, he lets this go. Oh, he's, he's saying I'm committed to taking your tower. Okay, fair enough. You're probably right. <laughs> okay, let's go like this. We're going to go like this, and we're going to go goblins really, really high, and Valkyrie to pull everything back. Valkyrie's going to do a great job, at least a decent job. And the Dark Goblin does so much DPS. I feel like that was a mistake, letting the Dark Goblin live, in my opinion. I feel like he should have let the, let the Dark Goblin or sorry taking out the dark goblin i feel like should have been his first priority like if i was him so now in this instance i think it's better to start cheaping away at the right tower because there's a really good chance we can't defend and with one double barrel i should be able to take the other side which is really nice okay i lied <laughs> he spent so much we're gonna go princess here because he's gonna go all in on this lane i can almost guarantee it okay let's do this right away he's gonna play a spell probably I think he should play a spell. Okay, beautiful. And now we're going to pressure. Now you can see the damage in the, in the other lane is going to pay dividends, right? Bang, bang. Double wall breaker connection. So even if he somehow takes this tower from us, he has to take both towers. So in his mind right now, he's like, okay, I have to do a split lane push and I also have to defend. So it's just looking really good for us. E-Spirit's so important in this matchup, using it to reset um the charges from a lot of his his heavy hitting troops like i said we're gonna go in here because i'm prepared to lose this tower i am mentally i'm prepared to lose this tower but we're gonna take his tower in return so gg's there against what i would consider to be a, a toxic meta deck we're gonna give him the ggs hold that dub and i will see y'all in the outro and that is going to do it for today's video. Here's the deck one more time in case you want to take a screenshot. I'll also put the link to this deck, the HypnoCR deck, in the YouTube description as well. So thank you one last time for watching. I implore you to try this deck. I know it's a hard sell, but it'll make you a better player. I absolutely can assure you that. So thank you so much for watching. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the support and the love from you. And I hope to see you in another video real soon. Peace.